We are still at listening module and today we're going to see a question type called form completion. Now, what is this form completion? Form completion is nothing. Let's say I call you to get information, right? So there is a form that I have to fill while listening to your information. What's your name? What is your email ID? What is your phone number? So I have to fill this form. It's mostly on a phone, right? You might have heard this when somebody calls you for a credit card or any information that have, have to be received on other side. This is called form completion. All right. Now, this is always in section one. If you don't know what is section one, I suggest you watch the video about listening sections. I have included all the information required to understand what sections are. There are total four sections, section one, section two, section three and section four. Difficulty level always increases from section one to section four. And because it always comes, I mean, the question type that is form completion always in section one is the most easiest, though there are some tricks or pointers to understand, but it's comparatively easy than other question types. Okay. In here, it will be a conversation like in section one always. So two people are two people are talking on a call and they're exchanging information, right? As they are talking on call, remember the two sides, that is one who is calling and the one who is receiving the call, that is the caller and the receiver. So one is calling, one is receiving. The person who's receiving the call will have low volume. So you might have seen in movies, the person who's calling, you will get a clear voice. However, on the other side, you might hear as if it is recorded. Same way here, you will get low volume on the other side. I suggest you, you keep your volume a little bit higher. Yeah, high volume, the, how can you do that? Remember, in exam, you will get headphones. Okay, you have all the rights or you have control over the volume. Hence, I suggest you when you have section one, keep the volume a little bit higher. This is one simple, simple trip that can help you to get better score in section one, especially form completion, right? Next thing is example. Without looking at what kind of question you'll be bombarded with, it will be hard for you to understand it. Let's see one now. This is how form completion looks like. Okay, there will be a title, there will be instructions, and below they have questions, right? Let me play the audio. By the way, this is from IELTS.org USA. They have given some samples. So I've included just to give you information how it looks like, okay? I'm gonna play the audio and you're gonna answer these questions uh, as when you are listening to the audio. So you ready for that? Let's go for it. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a clerk at the inquiry's desk of a transport company and a man who is asking for travel information. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Good morning, Travel Link. How can I help you? Good morning. I live in Bayswater and I'd like to get to Harbour City tomorrow before 11 a.m. Well, to get to Bayswater... No, no, I live in Bayswater. My destination is Harbour City. Oh, sorry. Right, so that's Bayswater to Harbour City. Are you planning to travel by bus or train? I don't mind, really. Whichever option is faster, I suppose. Well, if you catch a railway express, that'll get you there in under an hour. Let's see. Yes, if you can make the 9.30am express, I'd recommend you do that. Great. Which station does that leave from? Hellendale is the nearest train station to you. Did you say Helensvale? No, Hellendale. That's H-E-L-E-N-D-A-L-E. -E What's the best way to get to the Helendale station, then? Well, hang on a minute while I look into that. Now, it seems to me that you have two options. 
Option 1 would be to take the 706 bus from the Bayswater Shopping Centre to Central Street. When you get there, you transfer to another bus which will take you to the station. Or the second option, if you don't mind walking a couple of kilometres, is to go directly to Central Street and get straight on the bus going to the train station. OK, which bus is that? The 792 will take you to the station. I guess the walk will be good for me, so that might be the better option. What time do I catch the 792? There are two buses that should get you to the station on time, one just before 9 o'clock and one just after. But, look, at that time of the morning, it might be better to take the earlier one, just in case there's a traffic jam or something. The 8.55 is probably safer than the 9.05. Yeah, I don't want to miss the train, so I'll be sure to get on the 5 to 9 bus. And we are back. I hope you found all the answers and I hope you found them correct because we're going to look at the answers now. For the first one, it's 9.30 a.m. For the second one, Helendale. For the third one, Central Station. Fourth one, number or N-O or hash. I mean, a uh, pound sign. You can call it hash and then... 792. It's universally accepted and hence you can also use it. And last one, 8.55 a.m. Remember, if it's a spelling mistake here, it's incorrect. Right? Let's see. Now, let's see some pointers. What is? What are these pointers? Pointers are tips that help you to get the answers easily. They make your life easy while you're looking for answers while listening to the audio. So you might, from now, you will be getting tips, which are called pointers, in your um, all question types. So when I say pointers in my audio or in the video, what I mean is tips that can help you find the answers. Let's see the first one for this kind of question. Instructions are very important. And where are those instructions? Where are they hidden? Let's see the question type which you have seen recently. I mean, previously in two points earlier. As I said, always read the instruction, but what to read, we'll see. You see in here, we have this question that you'll get in exam in that this one is the instruction. Yeah, these are the instructions that you'll get in exam. Write no more than two words and or a number for each answer. Let me just zoom in to get an idea what it means by that. What does it mean? No more than two words means you cannot go beyond two. You can write answer as one word or two words. For an example, I say, cute cat. Well, cats are my favorite. So this is correct. If I add a cute cat, it's incorrect. So watch out. When they have mentioned not more than two words, it has to be two words or one word. What if they have mentioned not more than four words? then it is four words allowed. So you can have one, two, three, or four max. You cannot write more than four words. Now, what is this last part? And or a number for each answer. When they say and or a number, it means that you can add a number to these two words. If it is a number. What I mean by that, I'll show you. See, we have an answer here, which we have seen earlier, 9.30 a.m., right? You see that 9.30 is a number and then a.m. is a word. Let's say we have an example where we say two little boats. This won't be a trouble. The reason is we have fulfilled the two words instruction or the uh, rule and then number is added. This is still fine according to the instruction. Right, you might be thinking, oh, this is three. These are not three. This is one word, second word, and or a number. This is still fine. Okay, I hope you understand what I mean by that. Good. And it is really important. If in case it comes like you have only one word to write, you cannot write two words. Remember that. Now moving ahead, we have to predict. Prediction is important. What is the meaning of prediction? Let's see. So this is the question which you have seen recently. I mean the question paper, what would you predict for this answer? What kind of information can be predicted? The information that can be predicted is what will be the answer or the part of speech and who will be providing the answer. 
Why did I write who? See, this is always a conversation. I think we have seen that earlier that this is section one and section one it is conversation between two people. So who will be providing you answer? You can get an idea from predicting. Second thing, what will be the answer? Just a guess or you can guess the part of speech. Now, what are these part of speech? I think you know what part of speech is. If you don't in detail, please go through the grammar video. The first video itself will be helping you what are part of speech in detail, right? So we have nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, pronouns. You must be knowing this eight, okay? If you don't, as I said, go to the video. Now you can predict. Expert, express train leaves at, it could be a time. The nearest station is, could be what? Name of a station, that's noun, right? Same way you predict the answer because you will be given time to read the question. Right, five of these questions, you will be given time. In that time, you predict, you expect an answer. It'll get easier for you rather than just suddenly listen to the audio and write the answer. This has saved much time and much uh, answers just by prediction, prediction, yeah? Second is, um, I mean, third is sequence. Now, what is the meaning of sequence? Let's see. Audio is always, always, always played in the sequence with the question. Let's see the questions again. When you look at this, we have question one, question two, three, four, five. When the audio is being played, they'll talk about this information, number one. Then they'll talk about this information, number two. There can be inf information between these, but what they can't do is they'll talk about information number four and then suddenly go back to one. They cannot. They have to go in the same sequence, always, in every kind of question and listening, they have to go in the same sequence. Remember that sequence is important and you should get an idea what it means. Okay, good. Now, if there are some blanks in the statement, I mean, then it is a question. What if there are no blanks? Still, it is important to understand the sequence. What I mean by this one is, let's say there are no blank, there's no blank here, they have given the answer here. You should be listening to this as well for a reason you have to maintain the sequence, right? What if this answer is provided by them and they continue talking about it and you say, oh, there's no question here. There's no blank here. I can go proceed here. No, because you might miss where is the next one coming. This gives you a hint. This number three, number 706 bus, when they describe it, now you know, okay, now I have to jump to this one because they have described this one. Hence, if there are no blanks provided in the statement, they won't call it number three, they'll call this one three, but that is important for you to follow the sequence. Okay, good. Next one is unit and names. One of my favorite and most people make mistake in this one as well. Now, what is the meaning of unit? Let's say here we have seen some of the question. I just removed the, um, the instructions. I just put this uh, directly questions. Express train leaves at some time. Now, in this case, they have not provided in the end the time. Is it a.m. or p.m.? And if in the audio they say 8 a.m. and in the answer you provide just 8, it's incorrect. Because they have mentioned the unit in the audio, not in the blank. Hence, for an ex another example, they say 8 kilos. So 8 kilogram is the answer instead of just writing eight. Here you can use the form, short form kg, right? You can write eight kg, but if they have not provided here, k as kg in the end, you have to write eight kg. Another example, they, have, they are saying it will, it's gonna cost you $21. So if you don't write like this or the word dollars, then it's incorrect. So the rule is, if it is provided, the unit in the question, or after the blank, you don't include it. If it is not provided, you do include it. So the rule is, if it is provided after the blank, don't include it. If it is not provided, please include it. Right, so another example, you can say that, um, the, the thread was two meters long, and they have mentioned like this, the whole question, and there's the blank here, for two meters long 
Now here see they have mentioned the meter. You have to just write two or two. If I write here two meters, again I have mentioned it twice because question itself they have mentioned here that will be incorrect. I hope I'm clear about this part now. If they have provided, don't include it. If they have not provided, please include it. That will make it easier for you. Next one. So in here you can say the same thing. You can check with your answers and see if they have not if they have provided or not provided. In this example, they have not provided, hence you have to include it. And now check your answers. If you have not included your AMs and PMs, it's incorrect. Be harsh to yourself initially while checking the answers. Otherwise, you know, you'll get lenient and in exam you get deductions. Now, what about names? If they have mentioned names, they've, they're gonna dictate it. Yes, for an example, you have a name called Matthew. They say, hi, my name is Matthew. My name is Matthew James, my full name. And James is provided as blank. Your task is to write James over there, but you don't know what's, how to spell James, right? And they're gonna dictate it for you. All the names are dictated when they're answers. They'll say J-A-M-E-S, right? So remember, if it's dictated, probably it's an answer. Remember one more thing, this is important. Please be quick while writing the answers while, when the audio is being played. Uh, what I mean by this is, let's say we have a question here and they are playing the audio and suddenly I heard the answer, right? When I hear the answer, I'm gonna write it like this. When I'm writing like this, I'll try to be, if, if I am doing it incorrectly, I'll try to be as clear as possible in my question paper. I'll try to write answer properly. But remember, all the answers have to be copied in the answer sheet in the end. You will get extra time for that, don't worry about that. Hence, try to write it as quick as possible. Don't worry about the handwriting. It should be legible by you, that's it, in the question paper. So, the reason for that is, so that you don't miss the audio for the next one, the hint for the next one. Write the answer quickly and follow the audio as quick as possible. In this way, you might not lose the sequence or might not lose the flow of the audio. Else, chances are you're gonna miss the next one. And once one answer is missed, well, next one is missed as well because you are in panic mode. I've heard from people they missed one, or one answer or two answers and they missed five to six because of that. Because they lost the sequence, they lost the track and all the answers are lost. One single mistake of just, you know, trying to get your handwriting better, they lost it, even in the question paper. Yeah, I, I think I have told you enough that you will get extra time to write the answers to the answer sheet that will be given separately. So what you write and how you write in the question paper doesn't matter much, okay? And that's the end of the chapter.